Hej och välkommen till Fun Swedish, our YouTube channel about the Swedish language and culture. So, today we're going to do something very, very important. We're going to learn about the most common words in Swedish. So, it's super important because when you learn a language, you need to learn to prioritize. So, today we're going to help you to learn the 10 most common words in Swedish. De 10 vanligaste orden på svenska. Så, so, välkommen! Oh, but before we do that, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future videos. Okay, now we are ready. So, most of the words, most of these most common words in Swedish are actually preposition on, or something called conjunctions. I think it's called conjunction. Yeah, it is. It's basically things that bind sentences together. For example, if I say, I think that you are good at Swedish. That. That's a conjunction. You put something together. You put two sentences and make them a whole new sentence. Uh, so it's a way to make the language flow a bit more. Same thing with prepositions. Uh, we need prepositions so, so the sentence will sound coherent. So you're going to see that most of these words uh, on the list are either these two, preposition or conjunctions. Nummer tio. För. This preposition is very confusing because sometimes it's just like in English, for, and sometimes in Swedish we use it in a completely different way than we would do in English. And för can mean all these things. You see, isn't it super confusing? Yes, it is. And for example, if I say, jag kan göra det för dig, I can do it for you, it's actually exactly the same structure and we use it in the same way as we would do in English. But sometimes, if I say, for example, um, jag kom till Sverige för fem år sedan, I came to Sweden five years ago, then it's super weird because we put the för and you wouldn't put the for when you say, I came to Sweden five years ago. So you see, it's very, very different from English. And sometimes this för is used in an even more weird way. For example, if I want to say in Swedish, um, varför kallas det så för? Which means in English, uh, why do you call it like that? But if you translate this word to English uh, directly, it means, why do you call it so for? You see, super confusing. So this is a good example of a preposition, för, for in English, that has different meanings and it's not used the same way as in English. So, för. Nummer nio. Av. Av is also one of these words that can mean many, many different things. For example, it can mean made by uh, or made of. Uh, so if I say, en kanelbulle är gjord av kanel. A cinnamon bun is made of cinnamon. En kanelbulle är gjord av kanel. Then it means more made of. Nummer åtta. Är. Here we have our first verb on the list. And är is a really, really important verb because it can mean many, many different things. For example, uh, I use it when I say, jag är Daniela, I am Daniela. But also if I want to say, hon är Karin, she is Karin. Because for us, we don't do any difference between is, are or am. All is är in Swedish. You see, it's really, really simple. But this is also the reason why Swede, including me, uh, say or mix up R and is in English. Because we just say R for anything in Swedish. We don't care if it's singular, plural or anything. It's just R. Nummer sju. På. På also means different things. Uh, but sometimes it means just like English, on. And you use this, for example, if you say, Jag är på semester. I'm on vacation. Same thing with if I want to say you are på en ö. Always if you say that you are on an island, then we use this preposition. Because for us you can't be in an island, you are on it. So that's why we say på. You are på en ö. Nummer sex. En. En is an article in Swedish. And we use it when we're talking about something we're introducing for the first time. Uh, basically, like you say in English, a och an. For example, en hund, a dog. Or if I want to say um, en apelsin, an orange. The thing in Swedish is that we have different ways to say a or an. So one is en, this one we just talked about, and the other one is et. 
when you use both of them, that's the tricky part. And it is the most difficult thing in Swedish because there's no rules. Oh my God, how can that be? Unfortunately, it's like that. So you kind of need to learn by heart, let us see utan till, which words are N words and which words are F words. But what can help you is that most words, uh, mo most nouns in Swedish are N words. I think it's more than 70% and that's quite a lot. And it's also reason why N is higher up on the list than F, because most words are N words. So good thing to remember. And if you miss up and say F instead of N, I'm still able to understand. It's a little bit like you're saying a orange instead of an orange. You will still get the orange. So don't panic, don't freak out about this. Nummer fem, som. This one is very, very tricky because it also has many different meanings and all depends what you mean, what you're talking about. Sometimes it means that, sometimes it means off, sometimes it means like, sometimes it means whom, sometimes it means who. Oh, you see, it's very, very complex. You get it, it kind of gives you a headache. But the important thing is it has different meanings. Uh, for example, if I say, Jag har en hund som heter Bamse, then I'm saying, I have a dog whose name is Bams, or that is called Bams, if you want to say. So it can have different meanings, whom or that. Depends a little bit how you want to translate it. And by the way, Bamse is a very famous Swedish cartoon, and it's also one of the most popular Swedish dog names. Nummer fyra, det. Det is a very tricky one, because it also has very different meaning and very different meanings. Sometimes it works like an it, like the English it, but for et words. So for example, uh, glass, glass is an et word. And if I say, I, I say, instead of saying glaset, I just want to say it, then I'm using det. Jag tar glaset, jag tar det. I take the glass, I take it. So remember, sometimes it works like an it, but only for et words. And sometimes it's just used like a subject in a sentence. For example, if I say, uh, det låter bra. It sounds good. It sounds good. So I put here det for this it. Um, you're just referring to some fact or something uh, Something we're going to do. It sounds good. Should we meet at five? Ska vi se slakan fem? Det låter bra. It sounds good. Nummer tre. Att. Att is also a tricky one because it also has different meanings. Sometimes it works like the English to, like to talk, to eat. Att prata, att äta. And sometimes it works instead like that. I think that it's a good idea. Jag tycker att det är en bra idé. Or in the sentence, jag tycker att det är bra på svenska. And here you can hear that we make this att a little bit shorter. So it sounds more like an att. Jag tycker att du är bra på svenska. Instead of saying, jag tycker att du är bra på svenska. So it means the same thing, we just make it a bit shorter because we talk very fast, like we do in all languages, even though we don't realize it until you learn another language. Nummer två, och. Och is how you say and in Swedish. And this one has a very, very special spelling, because if you read this, uh, you might think that it should sound like osh or och, but no, it sounds just like it would be a K here. Uh, so it's only for this word, because normally CH actually sounds more like a sh or a sh sound, but here it should be och. Just as simple as that. Och. For example, in the word du och jag. You and me. But we actually sometimes just say oh instead of och. Du och jag instead of du och jag. Bit, a little bit annoying again, but just how we talk. But remember och in this sentence or och is how we say and. Number two in the list. And then we have come to the final word. The most common word in Swedish. The vanligaste ordet på svenska, det är i. This is the little nasal vowel. It's actually also a letter. It's a letter and a word. I, i. It's a little bit like I'm doing this. I. I is how we say in in Swedish, but it also has different meanings. It can mean many, many different things. But for example, if you want to say, jag bor i Sverige. I live in Sweden. I, i. So, super important to learn this word because it's number one, number eight. E, 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 e. So, that was the list of the most common words in Sweden. Thanks to Mikke. We see you. Hey, Dora.